Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So the Space Engineers team have really got something exciting for us in today's patch. Well, we now have Survival Mode. It has been long waited, but it's not just Survival Mode, there's a lot of a new features added. So let's actually start by taking a look what's available in the starting of a world. So we debated for a long time how you'd start a world, and we've got some quite interesting options for survival. So we've got all these settings I'll go through in a moment. We'll actually have a look at the world. So we've got Easy Start 1 that we've seen before, and Easy Start 2. Lone Survivor, we've seen that before, but now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. We have Start in a Rescue Ship with very limited resources near a small asteroid field. Now that sounds quite interesting. We also have a crash site, and a lot of you guys were talking about that, and that's rather excites me, that one. We also have two platforms, com competitive two-team multiplayer world, that sounds pretty exciting as well, and we have empty world that we've had before, so two new starting modes that are probably going to be a lot to do with survival. So let's have a quick look at the settings. Quite simple here, we've got, you either choose creative or survival, and I know you can change from creative to survival, so you can build your world, a big station or something in creative, and then switch to survival later on. And then you have layers of realism, so this is like super realistic, everything mines and everything that's super time, so it'll take forever for them people who like that. And then you've got three times, everything takes a little less time, and then you've got ten times, so everything is accelerated ten times faster, mining, faster production of materials from assemblers and so on. And now we've obviously got previous multiplayer systems and max objects, so this is the max renderable objects at one time. And then we have some asteroid settings, so we can have a lot of asteroids, we can have a, well an average amount of asteroids and four asteroids. So not bad at all, we might try out the extreme setting as well. Now we also have ability to auto heal. So auto heal is going to make the effect of our medical system, basically are we going to die? Or is our health going to regenerate over time? And I'm a bit of a hardcore fan, so I'm going to probably take that off. And let's have a look what else we've got here. So we have auto save, uh, we'll keep that on. And weapons enabled, we need that. And then show player names. So it sounds like we've got everything ready for quite an awesome survival world. So let's get started. So I'm showing you the starting options, the new starting options. This is the salvage ship, or the sort of resupply rescue vessel, you could say. Um, and it's supposed to come with everything you need to just kind of rescue yourself and save. So we're heading towards some asteroids right now. So I'm just going to disable the inertia and let it gently float over there. And I'll show you what's actually inside. So we've got a gravity generator. You can probably hear them humming noises and different sounds. Well, everything has been worked on its sound. So just listen to the jetpack for a moment. You can hear this more thrusting sort of wind blowing noise. And you've also got gravity generator switching off noises. I'll listen, just listen to this. Oh, that was probably not a good idea. Oh, right, there we go. Alright, so that's pretty nice. And then now listen to this. Oh, that's that's great. That is great. It just reminds me of them good old Half-Life days and recharging your system. We've also got a nuclear reactor by the look of it, and we've got some uranium ingots. So everything now revolves around power, so let's just open this door up. Alright, that's the outside, we don't want to go out there yet. We'll check what we get in these containers. Uh, we get, by the looks of it, a drill. Uh, we've got quite a few things, so that's the assembler door, was it? No, that's the assembler door. Nothing in there, we'll check below. And in here we have just the same, so it's pretty much nothing, it's a bare bones survival sort of craft, just what you need. Let's have a look at the other one, eh? Right, so we're at the wrecked red ship crash site option, so this is probably one of the more hardcore survival ones, so let's actually see what we get with this wrecked red ship. Obviously we can salvage a lot of these parts with the actual angle grinder itself, and it should give us some information on what we're grinding down. Hang on, that angle, angle grinder built something rather than deassembled it. Let me get my hood up. Right, yeah, so this is quite a good salvage vessel, I'm guessing, to salvage items off. Let's see what we've actually got inside. Maybe we've got some generators. Maybe we've got something that could help us on our survival. Or maybe there's nothing at all. So we've got some empty, sort of creepy cabins. I mean, the environment with the sound now is very immersive. Let's see what's in the generators. Is there anything left? So we've got a little bit of uranium to keep us um, going with our 
lights and electricity and power. Let's check over there. So this is probably, it's mirrored on both sides, isn't it? We'll check at the back and we've got a cockpit here as well, followed by another one. So what's this? Light armor block, okay. So this is a really hardcore survival. So survival sounds like quite a scary thing. There's a lot of new features for you to get your head around, but it is rather simple. So first of all, let's get ahead around the inventory. So when you select an object now, you'll get this nice um, grabbing a boob animation, as I like to call it. And you're also greeted with what an item takes to actually construct it. So a cockpit is obviously a complex piece of technology, so it requires quite a few components. But compared to a block, it, that only needs a very simple amount. So if we actually get our inventory up, it says everything we need to know about them items, how much they build. And the top one is actually a large ship, and the bottom one is a small ship. So obviously a small ship needs less items, so a small ship is something you're going to want to go for at the start maybe of a survival world and keep all your things in a very simple location. So moving on a little bit from that, let's talk about a core element of Space Engineers, something that devised to make it a little bit more challenging and that's energy. So everything from the biggest ship to the smallest little vessel requires energy to be ran. And obviously, if you're a spaceman and an individual, you're going to need something to keep your rebreather operating and your jetpack afloat. Obviously, you can drain it other ways by maybe accessing your tools, get doing some welding, doing some grinding, or even a hand drill. All these are going to add to the drainage of your power. So let's have a quick look at how we can recharge that. So you can recharge it one of three ways that I've discovered and I've been informed of. The first one is the actual medical bay. You can see we've recharged it there. You also get recharged from entering any cockpit. Now, something else to do with energy is if we enter a cockpit and you take a look in the bottom right there, we have the information on the ships and its current fuel time. So if this ship continues to operate like this, it has three days worth of power and that's real time because everything is operating in real time unless you pause the game in single player but remember in multiplayer as long as the server is up even if you disconnect everything is still running so if you leave an item in a machine or you leave it on then it's going to drain all your power and when you come back to it the worst possible thing is your ship could be floating aimlessly and easily destroyed so remember to lock it down hanger it up or do something serious in that department so let's move on to the medical bay i just briefly touched on it then but let's talk about the ways you can actually die. So the first way is getting shot, and nobody wants to get shot. And I've also tested out being grinded, welded, and drilled to death, and sadly, that doesn't happen at the moment. But you can also be da killed or damaged by ramming an object, even with your jetpack or in a ship. You can also be killed if your cockpit is destroyed when you're actually inside it. And obviously it's as easy as heading over to the medical room patching yourself up just like you do with your energy so it works very simply and it seems to work very effectively but if you do happen to die you'll do one of two things if there is a friendly medical bay in the area remember medical bays are coded to your dna as an individual space engineers and you own that item so if there's another space engineer in the area he can't use the same medical bay so if it's destroyed you'll end up spawning on a survival cybob vessel now, if we move on a little bit further, we can talk about construction. So construction is really simple. You're greeted with three tools, um, four if you would like to count the weapon as a tool itself. Um, first, you've got the welder. The welder is obviously used to repair and build objects. So when you come over to build an object, what you actually are greeted with is the options and what it needs, and it is built up in layers. So basically layers of construction, so you need this many components to get to one layer and once it passes the red line it becomes operational. And the same works with the welder, uh, sorry the grinder, if you grind something below a certain level it does not become any more operational and you can start taking the parts the grinder basically allows you to take parts away from it. Very simple but very nice intuitive design features that I'm really enjoying about Space Engineers. So when it comes to mining ore, there's two things that you can actually do. Obviously you have the hand drill. The hand drill has an inbuilt ore detector, so when you get close to the rock, you can actually see where the raw ore is in actual rotation to your position. But if you want a lot of a stronger sort of drill, you're going to need the actual ship, because the ship can detect ore at much greater distances. And from what I've been told, 
there is an iron core to every asteroid, making iron a lot more worthwhile, and it sounds like it's going to be a major component in constructing other objects. That is pretty simple for mining, not too many updates. The sounds are all pretty much the same, and everything seems to be very crisp to actually play with, and that's what I like. So in front of us here, we have a refinery and an assembler. So once you've collected your ore, you don't need to refine it, just like I've shown you before, but I want to show you the new features. So if we actually take a look here, that's our inventory of the player, or yourself. And then we can actually have a look at the production item. So there's a lot of more new things added. So we've got blueprints here. And basic blueprints will allow us to tell us what we need. So red obviously clearly states we don't have that much of the item. We also have a feature to disassemble items. So say something we do have in our own inventory, such as maybe a welder or another item, we can actually deconstruct the item and get its own sort of materials out of it. But for this, I think we're going to work out what we need to assemble. So it's very simple. We're just going to need some FE or iron ingots for our basic light armor design. And obviously you can split them up into different sections. So we've got tools. We've also got like sort of more mechanical computer based components. So I just went to visit one of my neighbors, um, just a little bit higher up in the asteroid over there. And as you can see, he was not very friendly and severely damaged my ship. So this brings me on to rearming and refueling. So these are new features. You can access the rockets by the front. And you can see we've got some rocket pods that we can add on here. So let's drag and drop. You can drop a maximum of four rocket pods. And I'm not too sure how much ammunition you can actually drop for the miniguns, but I guess you can fill it with quite a lot as it is a weapon that is going to need it. On the other hand, the reactors are going to need some uranium ingots, so we're going to have to go and produce some. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I would like to know if you'd like to see me do a survival let's play. Maybe just me, maybe a few guys, or maybe a survival situation where I'll put me versus a number of bandits, and let's just see what actually happens. So I'll see you next time. Touch my body.